Well, bet you didn't see this one coming. So it's been a year since I last had a look at Victoria Free, and I thought it was a great time to come back in November to actually give it another look and see what's different. Now, I do have to clarify this video is in fact sponsored by Paradox because they did give me uh, access to the early release of the new patch, which is uh, a big part of this video. But if for uh, any reason you think that is going to skew my opinion, you're wrong because I got given the go-ahead to say exactly what I do and don't like about the game with free thought. Um, unless you don't see this video and then clearly uh, I wasn't allowed to do that. <laughs> Just kidding. But the video is sponsored, I do have to say that, and I was planning on making this video anyway, but I was going to do it in March when the new DLC came out. Not right now, but uh, obviously this opportunity came up. And I guess we're going back in. Now, there has been a lot of updates for this game. And one thing that did actually draw my attention to it is if you actually go to the Steam page now, it is mostly positive. So I assume the updates that have come out have actually improved the game. And of course, if you haven't watched my original video when Vicky Free came out, I do highly recommend you go ahead and go have a look at it. Because it will obviously uh, clarify my original thoughts on the game as I'm not really going to go over any anything that I said in that video. Well, at least not intentionally I'll be going over old stuff. I mostly just want to look at all the good stuff and see if this is actually a more enjoyable experience from what has been updated. Oh, straight away I can already tell you I can still do this, I suppose. Alright, so I guess we'll give Uncle Samuel a look while we give this update a bit of a peep. Okay, so one of the big things I had a bit of annoyance with in the original release of the game is that you did spend a lot of time just meandering from through this screen, constantly updating, getting to know what you need and what you don't need. Uh, but now, if you go ahead and look at your assets over here, you have your investment pool, and your investment pool will automatically reinvest into your states and start building stuff autonomously to kind of replicate the free market. Uh, another thing we have is a complete rework of your government and how this actually works with more interest groups, radicals, stuff like that that I haven't actually looked at too much but uh, I'll see if I like this agitator system. As you can see we can go ahead and <laughs> invite exiled agitators to turn up to try and get specific laws passed that we might want. Okay, so would you look at that we've already got steel mills building on their own in New York which which, uh, I guess if you're not too interested in just constantly micromanaging your entire economy, this is a lot better, especially for me. I enjoy this way more than just, you know, endlessly building. Now, the big old thing we are here to look at in the update is the warfare changes. Hey, look at that, I can actually see my army now, and they do be on the move. Uh, I do have to say, it is a little bit still very, very much clunky having to do all your army interactions still pretty much through this menu. Uh, I guarantee that's probably gonna change at some point, but this is still definitely a much better alternative to what was happening before in the game. Another thing that's been at it is companies and already it's piqued my interest as I've noticed we can create the United Fruit Company. Okay, so the great shoe are going ahead and rising up against me and as you can see you now deploy your armies to the front through this tab and you can actually see them move around on the map. Alright, it's not only the best uh, war to show off what's actually different here but the army should now actually go about a bit more independently and also not just have have one battle that kind of defines the entire front moving. On top of that, if you really want to go in a certain direction, you can designate strategic objectives. Like if I wanted to make sure that this site actually gets taken before, say, this over here, they will beeline over here. Again, I ain't saying it's perfect, but it's definitely a lot better and does actually make you want to do war in this game than the, than the system that was here before. Uh, as you can actually see there, my army just actually removed all the way over here to actually now now go for this strategic objective. I guess one thing that's a bit annoying here is even though I've got an absolute victory there, um, I guess we, uh, <laughs> we still have to wait. Oh, so we can actually go ahead and form a new company already, and they actually all do pretty good stuff. Uh, I'm either gonna do this combined American forestry 
Guild or the Textile Corporation of New York. Both of them seem pretty decent, but I'm pretty sure the infrastructure one's the one I'm going to go for. Now, one thing that has changed as well that I don't even bother asking me what the optimal way of doing this is, is you can modify what your armies are now between infantry, artillery, and cavalry, specifically in, you know, the old-fashioned way that you'd imagine in EU4 or Vicky 2. Uh, but again, uh, do I know what the optimal <laughs> amount of cavalry, uh, artillery, and infantry is no idea hey but i'm sure someone out there will figure it out and then we will all just copy that person okay next up on our agenda we are building a lot of units because we need to take down mexico and do a bit of manifest destiny question is can i beat the mexicans i am somewhat doubtful but we'll see okay so it looks like we are going into battle and as you can see already we are in fact engaging multiple different battles across the line. Boys, we have advanced across the front pretty much everywhere here. It was a little bit back and forward at points, but we are now just going to push down into Mexico proper. Uh, and I have gone ahead and just put a strategic objective just to rush down now that we have everything we need to win the war, and we are getting ticking war score. Again, I do have to say it's definitely not perfect, but it is way better than it was before. I mean, it definitely shows they want to actually improve the warfare and make it somewhat enjoyable because uh, I didn't want to tear my teeth out this time. Again, I have no idea what like the optimal uh, setup is for army, but that seemed to get the job done. Hey, I got the job done so well. Apparently, I got an illegitimate government. What's going on here? Who stole the election? Oh, I can choose who I want to... Uh... <laughs> Go, go explore the west of our new lands. I'm sending Robert Lee. Uh, it would make my life a lot easier in the upcoming years if he didn't come back. And there we go. We completed heading west and we've cleaned up the borders for the United States of America. Don't mind this thing that says res revolution. <laughs> about it. Yeah, let's just say there's a bit of a pushback on us uh, getting rid of something in our country, which ain't too fun. Ooh, yeah. Okay, now we got a uh, revolution brewing on the other side wanting to ban it. Uh, we're truly stuck between a rock and a hard place. I also just realized who's leading this. It's, um... <laughs> it's the man himself. <laughs> oh, um... Well, Robert, Robert Lee, Lee just uh, turned back up from his vacation to Austria with a briefcase full of booze, apparently. I don't think this can go too well for our upcoming revolution. So, uh, I just found a pretty uh, interesting way to win the old civil war there. Uh, I just put a, a little crappy army over here in the west and then put my main army over here to push. The AI just sort of goes a little crazy. <laughs> and uh, I just push freely and I just I just won. Uh, just like that. Uh, so even though they had pretty much all the armed forces on their side, I just got it together by bringing out the cheese. So it is safe to say after the civil war that things have been uh, a bit better for the economy. Yeah, that graph tells you anything. It's that, uh... <laughs> we got a little way to go. Oh, well, good news is the economy is stabilizing after reintegrating all of the states back into the Union, along with a few new ones. And to celebrate our great victory and coming togetherness, we have decided to build the Statue of Liberty in New York. Oh, uh, and also, like, a whole bunch of coal mines, too. But, um... But if you're lucky, you may see the Statue of Liberty on a non-smoggy day. Well, the Cherokee have seceded. Yeah, I don't know about that one. Yeah, I just overrun them so quickly. Uh, I didn't even have time to react to that. But there you go. The Cherokee uprising is now painted with the American flag. Belgium sided with the Netherlands in the diplomatic play against radical Netherlands. <laughs> all right, well, you still got all the kooky, weird civil wars that happened too. Like, we got two Switzerlands right now. We got the Swiss proletarian revolt. And then normal Switzerland, both led by a man with a mustache. Oh, and we, we've also got the, uh, the Indian... The Anglo-Indian Arist aristocratic revival. I thought India might be just trying to go free, but uh, Prince Winston has other ideas. At the moment, I have a lot to do, though, and most importantly, I'm just trying to get uh, women uh, the ability to exist in America. Uh, I do have to say, I do like the way they've actually reworked this system as well. Before, it was a bit hit and miss on exactly how it worked. Uh, you either got it or you got really unlucky loads of times in a row, and you didn't get it. Uh, this system feels a lot fairer. And also, uh, you can have other ways of obviously putting down the revolts that do happen. So I do prefer this. It is a step in the right direction. Well done, Victoria. Free pat on the back. Oh no, why do I have a 
political movement to <laughs> become a monarchy, Joshua Norton. Uh, that doesn't actually have a historical precedent, by the way. Uh, this guy actually did declare himself a uh, emperor of the United States, and I think Mexico. I can't remember. He was a little bit crazy. Okay, you can even uh, click this button right now and learn more about Emperor Norton. I hate the fact that's his actual Wikipedia link. Oh, wait a second. This thing's actually getting a bit of movement going. Why, and why is Susan B. Anthony <laughs> on his side? Good news to me. You no longer have to hang out in the mine. Well, I say that. You actually still will be in the mine. You're just no longer allowed on the factory floor. Oh, I actually have a 45% chance to go to monarchy. I wonder. Oh, yeah, okay, we were actually pretty close to getting it, but uh, not close enough. Uh, it, again, it's 50-50. Some people want it, and some people uh, want to shoot me over it. Oh, uh, I've not been paying too much attention to the rest of the world, but France has uh, switched it up, I see. And Germany has accomplished nothing, I see. You know what we haven't done in a while? War. Specifically, war with the Mexicans. So we are warring with the Mexicans. Uh, obviously, this would have been a lot more fun if I was currently an empire, but alas. There you go. Not too difficult at all. Mexico is now my protectorate. Well, I've just been uh, meddling with the economy for a while. We're also now third great power in the world. That's good for us. Uh, Russia's not looking too good, though. Got a aristocratic revolt and a Chinese invasion, and uh, looks like the Turks are going in too. Nice. Oh, well, the Ottomans actually want to be uh, recognized in this too. That's uh, <laughs> not going to go too well for them. Hey, you really playing America if you ain't just infiltrating the Japanese? Can't really say uh, I was the one to open up the country, considering French owns quite a bit of it. But hey, I did get away with my small little trade port. Oh, we officially took number three world economy there. And uh, I uh, don't know what else to do, really. Oh, wait, yeah, I also, I took down the Mexicans a, a notch. They're now blue, which means they are a dominion. <laughs> which I guess entails that we just put a star on their flag. <laughs> uh, I did also expand a bit colonially. I took this province down here for the rubber, and then I took this province over here because I thought it might have rubber. It did not. There don't appear to be any sort of grand conflicts going on, though, other than the great Russian collapse that we witnessed against the Chinese. Uh, and Europe's been pretty stagnant. He had noticed that Germany still doesn't form. Uh, <laughs> it's just... Prussia forever, I guess. Uh, but overall, for my opinions of the game, so far in its current state, uh, obviously, this is, depending on when you watch it, gonna be relevant or not. Definitely a lot better than when I first played. Uh, is it still 100%? No, of course not. It's, it's nowhere near that yet, and a lot of the issues I still had in the other video, which, again, you should go watch if you really want to break that down, they're definitely still present, but there are a lot of good things they've improved on to make those way more bearable. Obviously, a lot of the game does still just turn into you micromanaging your economy and you are just zoomed in doing this doing that and there isn't a lot of room still for the geopolitical element especially i imagine in single player in multiplayer you might have uh, more of an aspect of you know doing some finagling uh whereas i guess if you really want to do the best for your country there's not too much room for finagling the only times i ever really need to go out was again for the rubber which i got and then that was about it but that could just be a case-by-case -case basis yes i am playing america there's a lot of resources a lot of land you get a lot of immigrants so you don't have to worry too much about population and stuff like that but i would definitely like to see an improvement in many more regards still especially towards the ai and again the ai to actually do a bit more of a aggressive expansion put it that way because not seeing Germany form is kind of sad. But the big thing about this update, of course, was the warfare and why I was sponsored to take a look at it. Again, I am sponsored. Click the link down below to go get Victoria free. And yes, the warfare is better. It takes a little bit to get used to still. It's um, not the most uh, intuitive system. I gotta say that much, but it is miles better than it was. I can tell you that much. Uh, one of the things that uh, I guess was the major pain with it, even though it is is better is that you do have to pretty much manage it through this uh, menu. <laughs> uh, you can just click around on the uh, the units themselves, but it's very easy to lose track of them. So I would like a bit of a better system to get this going with, but it, this is a really good start. 
uh, for, I hope, a few future improvements. Oh, hold on, I'm sorry, a second. <laughs> Communist what now? Um, yeah, I do like the fact the, uh, the AI will obviously build their own stuff. Like, right now, they've queued up, like, 40 different things for the, <laughs> for them to build. I, that is nothing that I'm doing right there. But, I think, overall, if you enjoyed Vicky Free when it came out and you had minor transgressions against it, you'll probably definitely enjoy it a lot more now with all the added stuff. Uh, the companies were pretty cool to go for as well. That was, that was nice. It's a little bit of extra flair, I suppose. Oh, and 100% passing laws now. That is, uh, so much better than it was, uh, on release. But again, I think that was an older update, so again, I am behind. Sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, the, the game's definitely on the path for improvement. Is it 100% where I would like it to be right now? No, of course not. But I definitely had fun in this game. I mean, I played all the way to 1915, and I won't lie, half the time I was just zoomed in in my own world, not even worrying about recording. A lot of people would want a definitive answer from me, and it's pretty much the same that I'd say in my first video. Uh, it's not for or against the game so much as it is right now, but it is optimistic that this game can become something better than it well, was on release. And I think the first big DLC is coming out in March, so I'll probably come back then, or I'll just, again, like I said, wait another year until November again, and we'll have another go, and we'll see where the game is there. But if it keeps going on this path, I guarantee it'll probably be a lot of fun. <laughs> and if it's not, um, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> uh, but either way, uh, I would very much say thank you to Paradox for sponsoring this video and letting me have a good impartial voice on what I think about the game and overall I do think it is getting better and if you want to try it out or if you already own the game and you haven't played it in a while now is definitely the time to do it with this brand new update that um, I'm assuming if you click my link down below you can go play it and have fun and if not uh, do what I do and wait a little longer and just hope for the best. Hey. But if you want to see more Victoria content on this channel, please let me know down below in the comments and the subscribes and stuff. I'd like to know all your thoughts on what you think the game's going and the progress that is being made. But yes, that's about all she wrote for the United States of America and our wonderful president. Hugh Green. <laughs> ah, but definitely leave your comments and suggestions down below in the comment section, little Timothy. I'm interested to see what all your thoughts are, and uh, until the next time, I'm gonna smell you later. Maybe. <laughs>